Well, the hits just keep on coming. Black Forest Labs, the creators of Flux, the stunning AI image model, have just released Flux Pro 1.1. And what's really great is that you can try it out today for free, little bit of an asterisk there, or at least like super dirt cheap. Okay, let's dig in and find out all the details. So over the last week or so, there have been some whispers about Project Blueberry, which is obviously kind of a little poke at OpenAI's Project Strawberry. Well, we now know that more than just being a superfood, Project Blueberry is actually Black Forest Labs Flux Pro 1.1. So as we know, there are three versions of Flux. There's Flux Schnell, which is German for fast, Flux Dev, which is German for developer, totally kidding there, uh, and Flux Pro. Well, we now have taken another step forward with the release of the 1.1 model, which is their most advanced and efficient model yet. Now, exactly how much more efficient is that? Well, Germans love their efficiency. Uh, the Flux 1.1 Pro model uh, provides six times faster generation than the previous Flux 1 Pro. In terms of the ELO score, and just a quick side tangent here, I only just recently learned that it is the ELO system, not the ELO system, you know, Mr. Blue Sky. Yeah, it's named after Arped ELO, a Hungarian chess master, and used to rank, you know, chess players' ratings. See, I'm not just AI stuff and dad jokes, you know, we learn stuff here. So going back to the chart, because if there's one thing that AI loves flexing, it is charts. We can definitely see that, uh, you know, under a blind test when it was still codenamed Blueberry, uh, the Flex 1.1 Pro model was like demolishing uh, essentially everything else. Again, in terms of cost to uh, satisfaction level, again, Flex 1.1 Pro, I mean, is clearly sort of in a atmosphere of its own compared to everything else. And in terms of speed, you know, once again, Flux 1.1 is rating very high in terms of its ELO score and uh, very quick at less than five seconds, really only beaten out by Flux Schnell and, you know, down here at low satisfaction, Stable Diffusion 3 medium. Now, that said, I will note that uh, Mid Journey is conspicuously absent from this chart. I'm just putting that out there because, you know, we're just going to get a flood of like Flux killed Mid Journey videos. That said, both Dev and Schnell can be run locally, although I should say that you're not going to be running like either of them on your Dell Potato. You're going to have to have at least a mid grade machine to run Schnell and a higher powered machine to run Dev. A number of platforms have teamed up with Black Forest Labs so that you can try out the pro version and more are joining every day. So currently it's a available on FreePick, uh, Replicate, and Fall.ai, and then uh, Together.ai, which actually I have not heard of. So let's take a look at Flux 1.1 Pro. Uh, I'm going to be using FreePick mostly because I had some credits sitting around there. Uh, that said, if you are catching this video on the day that it releases, uh, FreePick is uh, allowing for free generations for 24 hours. That said, you still have to be a premium member to get those free credits. Um, if not, then you get five just you know, straight up free generations. And just to quickly follow up on that, because I know everybody's exhausted with subscription costs, uh, you could go over to something like Fall, where you can generate for 0.04 cents per megapixel. So for a dollar, you could get 25 images. So kicking off with our old chestnut, a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street, uh, Flux 1.1 Pro gives us this, which uh, you know looks great. Having run the same prompt in almost like every video for well over a year, I mean, I have to admit, we definitely do see a lot of like white bearded middle-aged dudes. So it is nice to see that when Flux said that they would be improving image quality, prompt adherence, and diversity, that it, would, it wasn't just hot air. In terms of composition, it may look a little askew, but I actually kind of appreciate that. And I do think it actually still falls within the rule of thirds. Um, but, you know, after all this time of seeing like a lot of perfectly composed AI generated images, it is nice to see something that looks a little bit off kilter. Our guy in the blue business suit is lit consistently to the scene, so he doesn't look like comped in or anything. Uh, nice depth of field on the city background. Everything in the city actually looks really pretty good. Now, to be fair, on subsequent rolls, I did end up with kind of more of our you know, typical man in the blue business suit outputs. Um, like here we have a guy named Blake. His, his name is definitely Blake. Um, you know, very much bullseye composition you know, standard character or whatever. Um, nitpicky on this one, I do feel that like he really does feel like he's kind of comped into this. The depth of field in the background, it does have that nice, you know, kind of bouquetish look to it, but there should be more fall off between uh, the focus of him and the background. Moving on to some more, it's like cinematically imaginative. Here we have a cyberpunk woman with white hair wearing black armor, walks in a cyberpunk 
Allie, during the winter in the background, a group of shadowy figures follows her. The expression on her face lets us know that she's leading them into a trap. So this was a test on prompt coherence. And for the most part, it pretty much got everything. Uh, you know, we do have our cyberpunk woman with long white hair. Uh, she is wearing black armor, although that black armor does look like it was designed by Joel Schumacher. We do indeed have some shadowy figures following her. Her expression, does that say I'm leading you into a trap? I, I mean, I don't know. That's That was for this AI character to decide. Now, one thing to point out is that these images, I guess like more or less straight flux, uh, come in at 1344 by 768. And when you punch in on them, um, yeah, I mean, it lacks a little bit in terms of, you know, skin texture and the eyes in particular have like kind of like this weird quality to them. So I do recommend taking them through an upscaler because, you know, that's the thing that I think really kind of like gels everything together. That said, we shouldn't need that extra step for very long as Black Forest Labs has mentioned that fast high res generation is coming soon and that Flux 1.1 Pro is natively set up for fast ultra high resolution generation, which is coming soon to the API. We'll see how that looks once it drops, but you know, in the meantime, I gotta give it up to the creative upscalers. I mean, you really do get a lot of bang for your buck out of them. Moving on to some community outputs, uh, Pietro Cinero gives us the prompt, my boring Snapchat photos. And yeah, this looks pretty good. Obviously Flux is flexing on, you know, its ability to generate hands. Although we do get like an elongated wrist here a little bit. Nice blurring on the hat here. I too am a fan of the New York Yankees. Uh, and then apparently this couple is just rocking like, I don't know, it's like a 40 of uh, Cabernet back there. Like this, this, this couple, like that's a Friday night. Here's another one from that same series. I do find it interesting that one of the test aesthetics is to go with like bad photos. It's always kind of fascinating to me. Uh, again, I think that overall it looks pretty good. We do again, run into some problems with fingers. Um, there are one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five of them. Um, although again, uh, looks off as each one of them are the same. Certainly this guy would have been burned as a witch. This one from Ryan Morrison caught my eye. Uh, the prompt is here if you you know want to pause and read it or whatever. Uh, some things that I like about this. Uh, first of all, the catch light in her eyes. I think that that looks pretty lovely. Um, Something that I've noticed in general with Flux is that uh, you notice like there's like a little bit of like hair on her arms, like standing up right there. That's something that I've just noticed with Flux across the board is that it really does seem to humanize a lot of the characters with flaws. And it, I don't know, it's nice to see. That said, Flux is still, you know, a version one. So we do get some like weirdness, like that coffee cup is definitely too small. I mean, it's it should be this size or larger. And I'm not exactly sure how she got a hold of the iPhone Nano. That's my idea, Tim Cook. Don't you steal it from me. Mark K gives us this running over on fall. And again, this ended up costing uh, 0.004 cents per megapixel. Uh, the prompt here, obviously, award-winning photography of a TED Talk. The topic of the talk is Flux 1.1. And, you know, sure enough, we get, I don't have the high res of this, but accurate text, uh, TED Talk here and Flux 1.1. Fofer had a pretty interesting discovery that if you prompt Flux 1.1 with something like IMG underscore 1018.CR2, CR2 being the file format for uh, like professional DSLR Canon cameras, uh, it's the raw output. Um, yeah, the, uh, the results are pretty realistic. Now, the question, of course, is, is this just training data being spit back out to you? But I, I don't think it is. Trying it out for myself, my results were kind of, well, they were kind of all over the place. Um, so I, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. I think that this might be more of a case of like token roulette. That said, I did start to get some photographic results when I changed the prompt to IMG underscore 1025.heic, heic being the file format that Apple phones save their photos in. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I started to end up with, well, I mean, bland photos. This one being pretty interesting, I just prompted uh, woman and then followed by IMG underscore 1025. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't call this a great uh, photograph or anything, but there is something very like slice of life about it. In terms of a Flux Pro 1.0 versus 1.1 comparison, uh, Romain Simon gave us this, uh, this image was generated in uh, 1.0 Pro and then 1.1 gives us this, which is I, I think noticeably more dynamic and interesting. Although again, uh, we've got some problems with the hands. That said, I don't wanna harp on it too much. I mean, after all, Flux is in version one, like 1 1.1. Uh, for example, this is Mid Journey version one, a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street. Uh, yeah, it's actually kind of cool in all honesty, but yeah, 
oh sweet summer child. But overall, I am a big fan of what Black Forest is doing. Uh, you know, as an open source project too, it's obviously going to have some massive ramifications on the future of AI imagery and well, video, because that's coming soon as well. Not only that, but as I mentioned in yesterday's video, there is still a slew of stuff coming. So I'm sure we're going to see each other very soon. Uh, by the way, those uh, man in a blue business suit Pika outputs, yeah, those are still generating. So I, hopefully they'll be done by the next video. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.